I think it's time for the bourbon break. And for this bourbon break, we've got a fun one. We've got High West Distilleries, High West Whiskey, the American Prairie Bourbon, Barrel Select. Now, not only uh, do they have that, but they have a barrel number, a bottle number, and a percent of alcohol. So this is a uh, 102 percent or 102 proof, uh, 51 percent bourbon. Um, Debbie, what do you know about this bourbon? Okay, uh, first thing I know about them is confusion because um, uh, <laughs> not because they're, I'm drinking They're it, pretty specific. But I don't find the High West whiskey under it. Okay. There's only High West bourbon. Do you see American Prairie bourbon on it? I do not. Okay. So I do have the total wine pulled up though. Okay. So should I just do that? Let's just show their general site and then we can show the total wine stuff. Okay, cool. Um, so about this, this is not it, uh, about this bourbon, High West. So I'm going to show you all a little preview. This is what their website looks like. Um, this is not exactly the, the bourbon that Steve is tasting today, uh, but it seems like this is a 92 proof one. But on total wine, however, it runs for about $27.99. And uh, they say that it's from Utah. High West Passion brings us this complex blend of straight bourbons aged from two to 13 years in charred white oak barrels, producing an aromatic whiskey. Balanced flavors of candy corn, honey nuga, and sweet corn bread biscuits with a finish of vanilla and caramel apple. Uh, ABV is 46%. Taste, they describe it as light, spiced, and balanced. Uh, I saw one review and there's like a couple of reviews everyone's like very good bourbon slightly fruity not like bourbon blah blah, blah. <laughs> one dude was like give me a terrible headache so i don't know about that part that because guy actually just uh he, he had a personal problem and died so <laughs> yeah. had nothing to do with the bourbon yeah. um this, so this one's a little bit different than the one uh that debbie just pulled up they have animals on the labels. This one, uh, this one looks like some sort of weird deer. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, we have uh, a limited release. So this is like a barrel select. They say the barrel number, this is bottled for the High West fans of Texas. Uh, this was finished for 11 months in a scotch barrel. So they're doing some aging, which is interesting. Uh, this is, I believe, uh, they produced it themselves. I could be wrong, but I believe they are distilling it themselves. Um, I've also been to Park City, Utah, which is where this comes from. Great skiing place. Uh, I don't believe it existed uh, back then. So this uh, looks to be a newer distillery. Um, overall, I've enjoyed this bourbon um, to talk, talk about it a little bit. On the nose, you're getting more vanilla, uh, not not corny, um, you know, just nice mild vanilla. Um, you do get some heat. Uh, you're gonna get some heat all the way through. Lingering finish, sort of a, a nice, pleasant, uniform taste, uh, doubling down more on vanilla oak. You're not getting uh, corn. You're not getting um, any other more aggressive notes. It's it's pretty smooth, but it's hot. So uh, I think this is a great bourbon, uh, great for mixing, great for sipping. Um, I don't recall exactly how much it was. I think it was a slightly higher price point because it was a limited release. Um, but I, I think it's it's certainly worth a try. Um, you know, from what I can tell, this is not just a bourbon that's branded. Uh, I believe they're distilling, or if they are sourcing, they're, they're re-aging, which adds some interesting characteristics to it. So I, I would try it out if, if you can get access to it. So I was looking it up. Um, apparently, they are a full distillery in Utah, founded in 2006, and um, they sold out to Constellation Brands in 2016. Okay. So they may... 
they may be sourcing from Constellation, but I don't have yep. any indication that that this particular one is sourced. But it does not say bottled in bonds. Mm. Um, but it, it, it's good. I'm, I'm enjoying it. So. Oh, I think it is sourced. Is it sourced? Let's see. Well, I don't know. Undisclosed source. Okay, so so it is sourced, but they're re-aging, which is better than just sourcing and selling. Yeah. I saw your note. Bye, Paul. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. All right. So uh, that's our bourbon break. Fun one. Interesting. I think it's a really good start to uh, season two. And we've got some uh, pretty cool bourbons coming up uh, throughout the season. But, uh, Devia, back to you. Awesome. I like the way that the light reflects in the bottle, by the way. Yeah. So the bottle, I don't know if you can tell, but the bottle's got this weird finish to it. And it's it's pris prismatic glass. You, you can definitely see in the video. Okay. You, you can so definitely it's, see. It's prismatic glass. It's also, like... It's misshapen, like the bottom, like that they're going for just like a handmade bottle look. But between like that and spending 10 more bucks on aging it, I'd rather have the aging, but it's it's a it's a cute bottle. It's it's a nice trick.